and welcome back to my channel. And he's joining me from the village of Tollpuddle in Dorset. And I'm going to take a little history walk around the village and along the way discover the story of the Tollpuddle Martyrs. But I'm starting my walk here by the River Piddle. Yes, there's a river called the Piddle. I'm very tempted to have a piddle in the piddle because the piddle in the English language means to urinate. But don't worry, I wouldn't really do that. But it's the story of the Toll Puddle Martyrs that, uh, that brings me to the village. These were six agricultural labourers who in 1934 were convicted of, wearing, of swearing a, a secret oath as members of the Friendly Society for Agricultural Labourers. And they met under the sycamore tree just ahead of me. The six men were James Brine, James Hammett, George Loveless, George's brother James Loveless, George's brother-in-law Thomas Stanfield, and Thomas's son John Stanfield. All they wanted was better wages and better living conditions because they didn't have enough money coming in to pay their rent and support their families. They were arrested under charges under obscure act um, during a labour dispute against cutting wages before being convicted and sentenced to seven years transportation to Botany Bay, which is modern day Sydney, Australia. Just prior to their sentencing, the six men were kept in the prison cell at the Shire Hall in Dorchester. Uh, I visited there in a previous video. Uh, the conditions are quite, um, yeah, quite not very, not very pleasant, but that was normal for the uh, for that period in history. Cells were basically functional rooms for uh, for holding prisoners before their trial. And the prisoners then marched up the stairs straight into the dock in the courtroom. But out of all of them, um, it was James Hamlet that actually came back to, um, to the village after they were pardoned in 1836. Gradually, one by one, they came back. Walking through the village today and looking at the thatched cottages it really is very, very... Uh, picturesque. But James stayed in the village. He was the only one of the six that did. Uh, lots of the others, including James uh, Loveless, emigrated to Canada. Um, but James stayed and he's actually buried in the churchyard of uh, St John's Church. So let's go and uh, try and find his grave. It's a nice little sign as you walk into the churchyard. Uh, with an arrow pointing towards his grave. So I'm just going to follow the arrows, follow the sign, and that should lead me straight to, the, uh, to his grave. But what a delightful little church. And again, just like the cemetery in Dorchester, all the, uh, the stones are very individual. Uh, there's a few Celtic crosses as well. There's quite a lot of those in the cemetery in Dorchester. Um, but it's nice. They've mown the grass here and created some wild flowers and tall spaces for for wildlife. But it's, uh, it's very pleasant, it really is. The oldest grave in the churchyard is, is to a Sarah Pope. And she, uh, and she died in uh, 1669. The church itself, um, is 12th century and it's absolutely delightful with all the, uh, the stonework on the outside. Yeah, very nice indeed. But just up here is James's grave. There we go. There is the grave of James Hammett, one of the tall puddle martyrs, pioneer of trades unionism and champion of freedom. 
born the 11th of December 1811 and died, can't read that, uh, 21st of November 1891. But there we go, there's his grave. Wow. His gravestone is by the, uh, the sculptor Eric Gill. Uh, quite a well-known sculptor. He also had quite a interesting past as well in his personal life. Uh, the subject of matter many people today would find um, very much unacceptable. But there he is, James Hammett, the only toll puddle martyr to return to England and remain in the village. How exciting, wow. Let's walk up this way and out another way. But I do like graveyards that have um, that have uh, space for nature. It's becoming quite the norm now. They're called living cemeteries. Rather a, an irony there, I think. But it's nice to encourage wildlife and cemeteries are the, uh, the perfect place to do that. Lots of wildflowers, tall grasses, dandelions. Uh, it's really, really pleasant here. But let's head on up further into the village and take a look at the outside of the Toll Puddle Museum. through the village, looking at all the architecture, the thatch roofs, really is delightful. What an absolute gem of a village. But I've just walked into the front of the, uh, the museum area. Nice green, green lawn in front of the building here. Looking out across the valley and the river Piddle. Very pleasant indeed. But just up ahead is the, the statue of uh, the Toll Puddle's leader, James Lovelace. It was by the sculptor Thompson Dagnall. Um, Lovelace was um, uh, a Methodist minister. And he died in Canada, where he emigrated to, in 1874, uh, aged 77 years. And the statue there shows him looking up at the sky uh, in despair. And so would I despair as well if I'd been uh, wrongly convicted and transported halfway around the world to do forced labour. All these people wanted was a better life for themselves, better wages, better living conditions in order to support their families. But at least the mistake of justice was rectified and they all came home. So it's by the statue here of James Lovelace that I end this video. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time for another little adventure.